and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today, we're going to be learning about the hinge theorem, which is a really fun theorem for something that sounds really difficult, but is extremely easy once you actually get started with it. So let's get into it. So the hinge theorem has a whole bunch of things you can think about. You could read all this. But the hinge theorem, in general, means that these two triangles are dang near identical. Okay? Notice how there are two sides here and two sides here. And if they tell you that two sides are equal to each other on, a, on two different triangles, but the only thing is different is the angle in the middle. Let's say that angle A was 100 degrees, but angle D was 50. Well, if these two triangles were almost identical except for that feature, according to the hinge theorem, then you could say that if uh, that BC is going to have to be bigger than EF. So if angle A is greater than angle D in this case, then BC would have to be greater than EF. All right, so that is all that the hinge theorem means. All right, don't overthink it. That is all it would mean. The converse means it's just backwards. So if you were told that the angles were greater, then the sides are greater. Or if you're told the sides are greater, then the angles would be greater. But it is the same exact process. Okay? So we're going to do a few quick examples of this. Looking at these guys right here, which angle is bigger, 79 or 74? Well, from my last calculation, 79 is bigger, which means KL has to be bigger and PM would have to be smaller because it is across from 74, and the 9 and 15 and the 15 and the 9 were both the same side. So KL has to be greater than PM. That's it. Don't overthink it. Don't go any further than that. AD compared to BC. So AD is here, BC is here. Well, BC is across from 65, which means BC has to be bigger, and that means AD has to be smaller um, and it starts with AD, so AD has to be smaller than BC. Well, if AD is smaller, it has to be less than. Keeping the trend right along, if we have WX here and we have XY here, this time it's a little more annoying because they have the shared side, yes, um, and we're only given two angles here, but I need to find out this missing angle first. So it's a little annoying that they didn't give it to us. We have to take 180 and subtract the 93 and the 32 to get 55 here. Now that we have 55 there, we can confirm that 55 is bigger than 53. And 53 would have to be the smaller side and 55 would have to be the bigger side. So WX is smaller than XY or less than XY. All right, last one on this side, we got PQ and PS. So if we got PQ and PS, well, we only got one angle here, it's 83. But on this other angle right here that we're missing, that one, it's a straight line. We could find that out by just subtracting 83 from 180. Straight lines always add to 180, right? And if we do that, we get 97 degrees there. Well, last time I checked, 97 is bigger than 83. So that means that QP or PQ has to be bigger, and this one would have to be the smaller one. So that means this is greater than PS. Sometimes when you have an inequality with two triangles, you also have to solve an equation. When you have the sides, it's no big deal. In a later example, you're going to have the angles, and it's going to be a big deal. But with the sides, it's really easy. Which one's bigger, 3x minus 2 or 10? 135 is way bigger than 95, which means 3x minus 2 has to be greater than 10. You could have written it backwards. You could have written the 3x minus 2 has to be uh, the 10. Excuse me, 10 is less than 3x minus 2. I like writing the x first, so that's what I did. But then you just solve. Make sure if you divide by a negative with inequalities that you flip the inequality symbol. Doesn't happen too often but it does occasionally happen. I'm continuing to solve. I added 2 divided by 3. 
x has to be greater than 4. And that's it for solving. As long as you're solving for the sides. If you're solving for the angles, you're going to find out just how much different that can be and how much more annoying it can be right now. And if you have to solve for the angle specifically, you're going to have to be very careful. So obviously here with the 50 and the 40, that 70 is going to be the smaller angle. And the 2x plus 10, that angle is going to have to be bigger. So that means that you can set up an inequality. 2x plus 10 has to be greater than 70 degrees, which is easy enough to solve. You can subtract the 10 and figure out that 2x has to be greater than 60 degrees. And that means when you divide, you get x has to be greater than 30, which is great. However, this is a triangle. And triangles are still and will always be restricted with how many degrees their angles can be. So if you know that this is greater than, x is greater than 30, it is going to top out at 180. It could bottom out at zero. In this case, it's going to top out at 180 because 50 has to be bigger than the 40, and that means that the 70 is the smaller angle and the 2x plus 10 is the bigger. So if that happens, when you're solving for the angle, it only happens with angles, not with sides with these type of problems, then you will also have to say that 2x plus 10, 10 has to be less than 180 if it's a greater than. If it's the bigger angle, it has to be less than 180. Subtract 10, 2x would be less than 170, and divide by 2 and you get x is going to be less than 85 degrees. So you get that in-between value. And occasionally, you will have to represent it as an in-between 85 and 30. And you put the less than symbols there, splicing x in between the two values. We're going to try one more like this. And it's going to be with it being the smaller angle to show you how to deal with that. So. If we had the same exact problem, we'll even keep the 2x plus 10. Why not? We'll keep the 2x plus 10, and we'll even keep the 70. But if I change this to this being like 60 feet and that being 50 feet like it was before, now this is the smaller angle because 60 is bigger than 40. So now I have to set the 2x plus 10 to be less than 70 instead of greater than 70. And I subtract, I get 2x is less than 60, and x is less than 30 as opposed to before where it was greater than because it's a smaller angle this time, 50 smaller than 60. And if it's a smaller thing, we're not going to have to say this can't be bigger than 180 because x is never going to happen if it's going to be smaller here. But what we do have to recognize is this is still a triangle. Triangles max out at 180, but no angle inside of a triangle can be negative or, more importantly, zero. So instead of saying it has to be less than 180, we have to say it has to be greater than zero this time. If it's the smaller number, it's greater than zero. If it's the bigger angle, it has to be less than 180 like we had last time. Subtract 10, subtract 10, 2x greater than negative 10. And when we divide by 2, we get x has to be greater than negative 5, which is OK. Sometimes you can have a negative value for x. If you plug it in, that zeroes this out, which we don't want, which is why it's greater than negative 5. OK? We're going to also represent this smaller number here, bigger number there, x in the middle with the less than symbols. To get x perfectly in between, it has to fall in that range of negative 5 to 30. That's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, stay positive, and remember that with enough work, anything is possible. See ya.